Okay, so I've started the webinar and it's being recorded. Awesome. So I'll read the preamble. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and renewed by Governor Maura Haley, this meeting of the Board of Health will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by following the instructions on the Board of Health posted agenda via Zoom. No in-person in attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings as soon as it is technologically possible. After this meeting, all approved board, board of Health minutes are posted on our website once they are approved by the board. I will now open the October 12th Board of Health meeting at 5.30 with a roll call. Maureen? Here. Pramila? Here. Risha? Here. And Timothy Randir is here. So we will go through the agenda. Our first um, item in the agenda is to review the minutes from September 14th uh, meeting. I wanted to see if you have any edits or comments on that. I noticed a few typographical er errors. One is on the second page, third paragraph. Tim, your name is misspelled once in, in the middle of that paragraph with a G at the beginning. Yep. And I'm not sure, Risha, if your name is spelled right, it's the last paragraph. Maybe you don't even have that because you weren't here. How do you spell your first name? It's R-I-S-H-A. Okay, because there's an extra E in there. That, that often happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would guess. And it actually at the end of that paragraph says I that I will chair this meeting. I guess that was true at the time. I asked him afterwards if he would. So we'll let that go. <laughs> but but the, the content seemed accurate to me. I noticed those spelling mistakes as well after they went out. So we'll make sure to correct those on our end. Yeah. Any other edit edits to the minutes? If not, we will we'll have a, can I have a motion for accepting the minutes? Motion for accepting the minutes. I'll second. second. Yeah. So I'll call for uh, individual votes. Maureen? Aye. Pramila? Aye. Risha? I don't think you, I- You are not in the meeting, so. Uh, Myself, I accept the minutes. I so minutes are approved with the with the corrections uh, which are identified by Maureen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll be having a period of public comment. Uh, I want to see if anyone in the public have their hands raised. I, I something popped up on my screen that said someone with a phone number had their hand raised, but I don't see anybody else except the five of you, the five of us rather. It does say six oh. participants though. There, if you say full attendee list, there is one. Okay. Telephone number, but it doesn't even. No, I don't so know. So I think I have to. Now, for some reason, see, this is what I was concerned about. Uh, my screen's not showing me how to access full attendee list. Where do I, how do I do that? Because I know I'm the one who has to promote so, the if you, panelists. I, I don't know. I found if I clicked on the participants, that number, and at the yeah. bottom of the pop-up that came was a few full attendee lists. Ah, okay. Okay. I don't know if I ever noticed that before. I see now. Okay. Yes. So I see that there's per one person here. I'm going to allow them to talk. Okay. 
Your line is open. Please make your comment. Hello. Hello, we can hear Hello. you. Oh, yes. Hi, it's Lauren. Lauren oh. Mills. Oh, it's Lauren. I'm here. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I'm always jumping around. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on my phone for now. Okay. I'm trying to connect. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lauren, this is Kiko speaking. I don't know if you can see us. We can't see you. I don't know if you can see us. No, no, no. I'm just on my phone. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't have you join sooner. I was fumbling with the Zoom, but you're here now. No, so. it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I don't see anybody else then in terms of somebody wanting to make public comment. Kiko, can you promote uh, Lauren into the, as a panelist? Lauren is listed in the attendees. Yeah, let's see. Well, let's see. <laughs> I'm hovering over that. Let me see if I can figure it out. Sorry that I'm a little bit Zoom impaired. Um, it's only giving me the option to mute, remove permission, hide non-video participants, or remove. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. When I scroll over her. Um, let me see what I can do. I can text Kyle to ask for technical assistance. Um, okay. And then I'm, as long as you can hear Lauren, I'll try to get you into the panelist section. But do you want to go ahead with the meeting while I'm doing that? Yes. OK, thanks. I don't think I can be um, uh, up upgraded to panelists, but I can just listen from here and I can raise my hand if I have a comment or. Okay, I mean, that that certainly works, I think, yeah. All right, and given that there's no other attendees, uh, we'll move on to our next item. Um, next item is uh, old business. Um, we have to finalize the body art regulations draft. Uh, if there are any comments on the draft, edits? I think we we looked at the most recent uh, version in August, and, and I remember Tim had some comments, and I updated those. And so I think it was up to date. I, I thought this was a quick process, and we'd be like doing a hearing in September, but uh, as Kyle and Nancy have informed me, it's quite the process. And I, I did get the updated um, PDF to Kyle on Monday or Tuesday. I don't know if he was a holiday. I forgot it was a holiday Monday, but Monday or Tuesday. And I think it was going to get into the newspaper and go through that process. Um, the one question I had is we we didn't make a decision on on the fees and, and the, the 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 document actually says the board will set a reasonable fee so i don't know that we have to have that settled before the it the approval and the hearing um but and i had tried to reach out I, jennifer had suggested a person in i don't remember the department i think his name was stephen mccarthy um and I emailed him to see if he had any comments on how the process of setting fees that we could take into account. Um, I think Tim had the reasonable idea of just dividing it into, for the guest artist, you know, with, if the full fee is 250, we divide it by 12 if for, for up to 30 days. Um, I didn't know if there were other thoughts about, you know, because each, guest artist has to be vetted like any other um, full-time uh, artist. And is there, a, is there a balance somehow that the, of the work that's involved for the inspection services or the people who do vet, this vetting? So I, don't have, I didn't get any response and my thought would be to follow the reasonable uh, idea of, of just dividing it by 12 and come up with a round number close to that number. But again, I don't know that we actually need to do that today. Um, I think we might need to have a thought about that for when we 
prove it and go ahead, then go ahead and set the fees. I don't know if anybody else has been thinking about this at all, but uh, mm -hmm. or have any ideas. <laughs> Risha? I, I don't particularly have ideas on that. So if anybody wants to uh, respond, I, I can see a an argument for bumping it up a little because the work is still there to to vet them. But um, mm -hmm. I don't have a strong opinion on anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I have other comments when you're ready for other comments. About this, about body art? Yeah. OK. Um, OK, I think. Um... Oh, we can sure. decide it. Uh, we can decide it later. But I think uh, uh, this is a question for Kiko. You know, if you are having a public hearing, should this information be available for the for them to have? So maybe we could go with dividing. You know, um, based on the time. You know, the number of months, and uh, that should looks like it's. Uh, we don't have any other alternative suggestion you know so maybe i think that should be reasonable for now and then mm -hmm. maybe we could revise it later on if we you know if you want mm -hmm. to change it i don't know that, if that will work that seems reasonable to me yeah. um maybe to round it up into a, a number that's not like 23.95 or something but like to 25 dollars or something per yeah. per month um would be reasonable to me. And then the the other one is the 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 apprentice licensure, or I don't even know what we called it after after all. Um, but I think it is an apprentice license. Uh, I thought should be lower than a full license, um, as those folks aren't earning much money. Um, and I thought uh, the normal license for just doing one type of body art is. $250 a year and for doing both um, piercing and tattooing, I believe is $375 a year. And I thought a hundred dollars a year would be a reasonable thing. Uh, and again, that's just uh, a thought. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I mean, I can certainly do some investigation on my end, as you suggested, Tim, to find out, you know, do we need to have this available in time for the public hearing? Is there something that we have some advice perhaps about how to structure the fee, that some process that we follow internally? So I agree we don't need to make a decision now, but I can work on it. Okay. Okay. Risha? Maureen, the, the amount you okay. mentioned, 250 and 375, is that what we're charging now? Yes, yes. Okay. And that's higher than like some places. Uh, yeah. Well, I was well, just going to say it's higher than a nursing license. Well, it's probably annually higher than a medical license. Um, so it's <laughs> so I don't know where these numbers are coming from, yeah, you know, well, but they are what they are. We have them. to work. It, I know. So that's what exists. And it's higher than some other other areas like Northampton. Yeah. Um, and so I was struck by the them as well yeah it's actually timely because i did get an email you know in my first nine days on the job here about how they are they reassess the fee structures for all of the fees that the town charges for various things and want uh -huh. me to weigh in on them so maybe <laughs> it's an opportune time for me to do that um so again i'll look into it and get back to you all okay i appreciate that Arisha? Um, I, I apologize because I didn't uh, participate in the August review of this. So um, I'm coming in with fresh eyes. I just had two sort of questions slash comments. Um, the first was on autoclaves and talking yeah. about the sterilization of them. Um, and I just wanted to know in the, the context that I've worked in in the past, uh, people use autoclave tape to show that the internal temperature has has reached the required amount as a way of proving that it's still operable um, and that it, it it's effective. Is that something that's used here and could that be added in? At, if so, could that be added in as a, um, I note some of the, the conversation here around, you know, that they have to 
documentation of autoclave's ability to destroy pores is received and how often and um, it would, yeah. would the tape it count as that? And is that a simpler process at all? Um, I was looking into this because I'm a little bit familiar with autoclaves. I worked in a student health center where we used it. And I thought we just used the tape because that just tells you it got to temperature. Right. It doesn't prove that it killed the spores. Okay. Okay. So there was actually a backup, uh, another method where you incubated some spores and you had one little vial that went into the autoclave and one that didn't, and then you incubated both of them. And so you had a control and a, a test one. And so that's better. But some places, I think like Northampton, actually send these out to a, a lab to have them verified. So the... And I think, honestly, nobody uses autoclaves anymore because everybody uses disposable mm. uh, items. And so it's kind of a moot issue. And it's so much work and expense that I think that it it um, it isn't worth trying to reuse, reu you, you use cleanable, reusable implements. But, but there is that option. Um, so I and I this this text is partly comes from a, a um, model standing model orders that came from the state originally and some were in, in like made more detailed to be more effective and assuring the safety of those implements by adding adding other other uh, methods to prove that they really are sterilizing the the implements so so i, I and then you're funny i i don't think it mentions the tape anymore but that no, it doesn't. the tape was always on as there's a little thing inside a little piece of paper and it turned black i think or mm -hmm. slime black but um i think that's generally used as well but this it's this is enough. another okay. level great and then my only other question is about gloves. Um, at various points in the document, it refers to medical gloves or disposable gloves. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if we want to be consistent or if they're, if if we're actually asking people to use two different types of gloves uh, at different parts. Uh, I think that's kind of an oversight. I think we're a little late in making a change right now. I think oh, this is okay. published. Okay. And um, maybe if there's concern about that, after we go through the hearing, we can make some small changes. Okay. But I appreciate your careful reading because I, I, I <laughs> fresh eyes are always a good thing. Um, and it, it, it this came up because um, the local tattoo artist wanted to have a guest artist, and that was the main thing to put we wanted to add yeah. and then it opened up this whole whole uh regulation to review and it really ended up taking well, it's been about a year or so okay. um it's what happens okay. um but That's thank you uh, any other comments before we move on so I believe uh, we have scheduled the public hearing for November. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's it will be within the typical Board of Health meeting uh, meeting time. It'll, so it'll, we'll start with public hearing. And then once that, that is done, then we'll move into our regular meetings. Yeah, I think so. Well, then we decided to have the public hearing at 530, which is the time that this meeting normally starts to enable, you know, not to mess with anybody's schedules. But then I think the question is, what time do we want the Board of Health meeting to start? Because we have to post that. Um, so is 630 reasonable? 645? 7 o'clock? I don't know how long these public hearings take or, you know, it depends on how many people show up, I suppose. We yeah, I don't, we haven't had a great deal of concern or interest in this changes in these rules. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would think half hour tops, but uh, I don't know what other anyone else thinks. Tim, you've been through this. I think we had with the tobacco regulations, we did a hearing at the 5.30 time yeah. and it was very brief. Yeah. And that had more interest from from the seller, you know, the tobacco sales uh, outlets, I think, than this this regulation might have. But so we could we could say uh, uh, six o'clock, you know, our board meeting can start. But mm -hmm. if the public hearing, you know, is a little bit longer, we could always delay the start. But for now, you know, for official reasons, you could say six o'clock, the Board of Health meeting. I don't know if it will work. Yeah, we, I think that would allow enough time. We might have, but we still would probably might have to delay starting the, the public health meeting a little bit. It, yeah. um, or, or wait, you know, we might have to be waiting for the time, time to start. You know, we don't want to start it earlier before people expect it to start. Well, but it's only a guess. I guess the other option would be to say, you know, if you think it's going to take half an hour, maybe the Board of Health meeting starts at 6.15. People get a chance to get up, stretch their legs for a few minutes. But if it ends at 5.45, that means that we're waiting half an hour for it to start. So, you know, it's, I it's, think it's safe to say 6 o'clock. 6 is safe. Okay, yeah. great. That, that sounds good. I'll just, yeah, based on one experience of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm noticing that there's somebody else who's joined. Um, I know we're past the public comment period, but do we go back and take public comment then when someone joins the meeting? Uh, unless, uh, yeah, I don't know if the the uh, the comment is related to uh, body art regulations draft or. Why, why don't we check, you know, what what's the reason they, you know, they want to comment on that? Because okay. if it's going to be related to this, we could do that. You know, we just, uh, you know, just wrapped up that public comment period. But, you know, it's okay, you know, see, okay. you know there's only one person. Okay, I will um, promote to panelists then. It's Arthur Keen. Hello, Arthur. You can go ahead and make your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I'm not here to comment. I'm here covering the meeting for the Indy. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thanks for your interest. All right. Um, so our next, I, I, next item in the agenda is uh, toxic chemicals regulation. I want the input from the health director. Yeah, so um, I have talked with the staff about this and I talked with you also, Tim, about the conversations that you've had in this meeting. And I looked over the document that Tim, you and Kyle had worked on a little bit. Um, I think you've all come to a really good decision to make a resource page. Um, and I think we can definitely put that on our website. So I looked over it briefly. It's absolutely not my area of expertise, um, but I think it's a good starting point and I feel like it's the right way to go. So um, I would just uh, wonder, I think we just wanna add it to our list of things to do. You know, I'm making a list since I'm new in the job of things to, to work on um, to get this resource page finalized and fleshed out. And I sort of imagine it being akin to, there's an air quality page um, underneath the public health department section on the website. So it would be something along those lines. So it's something then again, that our staff would work on, get a final version back to you for comment, and then we can get it up and on the website, knowing that it will very much be a living document and be edited as you know things change or as new information becomes available. Does that sound right? Yes. Uh, any comments from the board? Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Um, I feel like, I think we talked about this before and that is 
what the board does and what the health department does. And that's more of a, a programming issue. And it might become something more than just a website, but kind of a, you know, disseminating information in other ways to people about consumer products or how do they avoid, you know, how it, it, it different kinds of public activities that the that the department participates in. But yeah, I think it's a good place to start. I, I also agree. Uh, thank you, Kiko. Um, um, I think uh, information is very powerful and uh, providing that information for everyone, it's always uh, a good way to encourage uh, alternatives and clean products. Uh, and also um, Kyle mentioned that your department gets um, uh, some sort of emails or inquiries about this. And there's another option is to actually direct them to this resource page so that mm -hmm. they can get more information on what you know on on, on different types of uh, contaminants so yeah that sounds good any other comments from others or... did we lose lauren um i see lauren in the list in the, in the attendees list okay because i don't see her i guess i'm not seeing the telephone <laughs> yeah you I know what i think lauren. it is because I don't know for sure. Again, apologies that I'm new to this Zoom webinar format, but I think Arthur, I promoted you to panelists because I didn't know that you were just you know listening in. So I think what I need to do is put you back in the other room, yeah. the panelist room. And um, in order to do that, um, I'm clicking on this. It says remove. So I'm going to remove you, Arthur. I hope that doesn't remove you from the entire meeting. If it does, you can just call back and we'll keep you in the panelist room. So I'm going to do that. No, it says you can't remove. Ah says you can't rejoin the webinar. I don't want to do that. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Is there an option for uh, moving to attendee list or? It just says change panelist appearance, which is not the right thing. I tried that. So. It's okay. I think we can move along. Um, okay. okay. Um, so our next item in the agenda is Board of Health Chair Succession. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hi, Lauren. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know this is difficult being on the phone, uh, but before we move on, I um, know that there's some consensus or whatever to just do the resource page. Um, but I just wanted to note that um, I was listening to the Conservation Commission and they were going over um, community gardens and the policies for that. And um, they were discussing what like pesticides um, to use, like for, for, for gardeners to use. And, you know, that sounds like a rules that pertain to um, gardening. And so I just, you know, that like in my first year on the board, we kept saying that the Board of Health, you know, is about doing regulations. And so I'm kind of still not sure why we're going in the opposite direction. Um, as far as like toxic chemicals. And um, I know that we may need like some more expertise or more research as to what direction we wanna go. Um, but I do think that it's important for us to like have some, some ideas on what is important to us as far as like what what people use and what the the town uses and different departments that deal with um you know uh land 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 use where where young children are and where you know 
people recreate and, and so forth. So I just I just think that I it sounds like we don't want to go in that direction right now, but I do think I see other um you know committees and 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 commissions like discussing this and so I just think it's it's an important thing to come back to. I hope you uh, thank you Lauren. Hear me. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh I think uh, I don't think we are going in the opposite direction. I just want to correct that because we are actually also concerned about that and and the, the agreement is to what is the best way to actually um, minimize toxic chemicals as well as have some sort of a alternatives available. Uh, if it's going to be a, a garden use, I think um, maybe some link related to from the organic agricultural um, uh, associations usually have some very good uh, resources for gardeners. And I think that is something we could add to the resource page. That idea of community garden, and mm -hmm. it's something I think we haven't thought about. You know, it's it's a different um, use of townland by people who are not employed by the town. And that it's, brings up a couple of questions about who's responsible for that. I feel like the town itself has been very responsible about avoiding toxic chemicals on public lands and around the schools and the parks and everywhere. But this uh, does open up a different avenue for people. I don't, and I don't know if I, I hadn't thought about it. Um, and it might be something to think about a little bit. I don't know if the Conservation Commission is already dealing with that. Um, and, and as they yeah guess, they they are supervised right so this it's just kind of a different different user and a different um model because i there aren't really other places like that where the public are using chemicals on town property um so so that's something that is worth checking on mm -hmm. <laughs> um mm -hmm. but northampton community gardens is that townland, Pico, do you know? In Northampton? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is in, in in Amherst, but I don't know either. In yeah. Amherst, I think you're right. It is townland. It's a, it's an important issue that you're raising, Maureen, but I don't know about Northampton. I, I don't know if it's townland that the community garden is on. So yeah, this, is, this is another an important organ. So it's a good question. It is a good question, yeah. yeah. I wonder, Kiko, if you want to raise that with the town manager or whoever decides these things in terms of where the boundary lies about our responsibility and the Conservation Commission, for example, in this case, and because it's a community garden, does that then mean that the Board of Health becomes involved? I think it's worth clarifying. I totally agree. And it's also really timely. And I feel good about the orientation that I'm getting because Assistant Town Manager Dave Zomek took me on a tour today and we went right by the community garden that's on town land. So I <laughs> saw this garden and I think this issue that you're raising is really an important one. So I will follow up. Um, Are these the Mill Lane, Mill Lane Gardens? Um, the dirt road? It's a dirt road? Mm -hmm. Um, it was behind, um, it's, oh gosh, I'm not remembering now. It's near a school. It's on the other side of the school. Um, is it the, the Fort River Garden? The Fort River. Yes, that one. Yep. Okay. Because I think yeah. there were also some on the lane, which could be Amherst Cop. You know, I don't know what land that's on. Yeah. But, okay. But yeah, it's an interesting question. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, uh, if we can work with, you know, in terms of when usually the community garden is contracted with individuals who are going to grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably have some sort of a checklist of things they can and they cannot do. Right. And that's where I think some uh, specific review should can happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And I lastly want to say, but I think the commission is coming up with a set of criteria and rules. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and that's why I'm saying I don't understand why the Board of Health can't come up with some, some rules around um, toxic regulations. Like I, if other com, um, commissions can do that, even though we're not a commission, I'm just saying that other groups are setting rules. So I just don't understand why the Board of Health cannot. No, um, there is a clear um, user there where they can develop some sort of a guidelines because when they are entering into a contract, there's a clear um, person they could identify on developing those guidelines or regulations, you know, what you could do and what you cannot do. And our preview is on the public use of toxic chemicals, and we had invited a lot of our officials to give us a, uh, and most of them, primarily they don't use the, you know, the, any of those toxic chemicals, you know, so, and that's where the question is, you know, who are we going to regulate? And if we could answer that, I think that will be a good way to step forward, you know, to developing a regulation. Yeah, I guess when we spoke to different people from the Department of Public Works and from the um, uh, procurement procurement department, they follow rules that are uh, promulgated by the State Department of Public Health with environmentally, I don't know, there was EPP, I think, I can't remember what it meant, but the, the, they're better products, you know, they're kind of approved products. And so I don't know that what, I guess the question was what we would add to that. If we thought we could add something to that that was important for our town, I think we should do that. But I, I guess I was having um, a hard time imagining what, what, what we would add to it. So, um, so I guess that's where that might, thought comes from it's more of an education for for the town itself or because it, you know the normal citizens of the town aren't following those guidelines um of the state part mm -hmm. you know all the time mm -hmm. and, and it would help people to know what they're using around their homes in their houses on their faces in their when they brush their teeth you know it's like it, you know there's a lot a lot to think about, but it's not something we, that kind of thing we can't regulate. Um, so I, I'm still thinking about this <laughs> and I think we can all still think about it is there's an opportunity to make a difference um, for the town and, and for our population. Um, and if you can think about something that you, that that makes sense, Lauren. We want to hear about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a, I think that's a good way to think about it. Is like, what could we, as the Board of Health, add? You know, what is some area that we want to focus on within this? So, keeping the conversation like on on the radar mm -hmm. um, sounds sounds right. Alicia, do you have any comments on that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, are we ready to go to the next item? Okay. Uh, this is about the chair succession. So what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm just going to share if I can. So Maureen, you and I did speak a little bit about this um, mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, Maureen has offered to sort of be in this chair role for a while. And if I'm not misrepresenting our conversation, I think you had said that you were willing to continue to serve as chair in this interim capacity until June, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, which, you know, that you, you don't have a lot of time outside of the meetings, but you're certainly able to work with staff to prepare the agenda and to chair the meetings from here until June, which is when your term ends, 
correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So I think that's wonderful um, offer that Maureen has made. And I was I was kicking and screaming on the way, but I I, I think <laughs> it became clear that that part of the job isn't too big, and anyone on the board can suggest items for the agenda. And the, one of the only issues, and that would be discussed with Kiko, and also just to make the meeting manageable, it might depend uh, would it be on the agenda this month or the following month, but just to kind of keep it keep the agenda in a reasonable uh, length. Um, so that part wasn't as challenging and running the meetings is not my favorite thing to do, but it's okay. So, <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you. A big thank you, Maureen, for agreeing to do this. I, I know that you weren't entirely sure that you wanted to, but I think it's really good to have consistent leadership until, uh, you know, until your term ends. And um, you've been terrific so far. Um, and we talked about doing a co-chair or some other kind of splitting it, but I actually, I think it was Tim who kind of advocated for not doing that. And I think he's right about that because it just makes things probably more work and harder. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't that complicated right now. And it, it would, and anyone can make suggestions. So uh, it doesn't uh, keep anyone off the agenda or, you know, it, it's just, uh, just to, man to manage it. I think it's somewhat, Easier. And you can delegate to any of us as well. Right. And that's the other part is that it's not the person who does all the work um, in terms of, you know, new regulations or researching areas um, either. So we all get our chance to, to do those oh. things. I think yeah, the yeah. consistency oh, of... Lauren? Lauren, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go oh, um, yeah, I I know that we've had this conversation a couple of meetings I kind of differ and again I feel that we you know bring different um, strengths to the table um, I, I am just a, a community member but I feel like there are issues that we haven't yet kind of um, gotten into um, and so I just, I feel like in this time in the town that we need, like, to share, like, processes, like, share um, how we do things. And so that's why I was for, like, a co-chair. And um, I believe that, you know, Tim, Tim is, like, chairing this meeting and so it just to me there could be anything that could come up so I just don't understand why we can't have a, a chair and a co-chair like if we're going to delegate if we're going to um like share other responsibilities that the the chair does why can't we just elect a a, a co-chair and also I think like other um, um, town committees, there needs to be maybe a, a student voice or a a young person voice because I feel like we're kind we kind of get stuck like in like doing things you know in a certain way or seeing things in a certain way, and I I really feel like perhaps we need to open up you know perspectives and I I'm I don't know if I can make a motion or propose or something like that but I just feel like even with the the new um board member I don't know your name off the top of my head but I just feel like there has to be some kind of student representation or you know just a, a perspective from like maybe a a, a a next generation that's coming ahead. I I I, I kind of just feel like that's missing. So I 
And I also want to know if we're going to actually vote because it just seems like we're trying to do everything by consensus, and I don't, I don't think we did that last last year. Those are my thoughts. Can I? Um, so, I moved from the Affordable Housing Trust to the Board of Health, um, and they had okay. co-chairs. Um, and I found it really difficult because of open meeting laws to have two chairs because every time you talked, if you wanted to have, you know, if you wanted to send a message to the chair, then you have to send the message to the chairs. That's three people and you've already violated open meeting laws. Um, and so I found that particular bit to be really challenging. Um, and I just put that out there as a as a comment. I have no uh, comment on how this board has been run or, or any of the other things that we're talking about, but um, I found that to be challenging. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, what do folks think about um, the other thing that you said, Lauren, about student voice, student representation? So I don't think we exclude students or anyone else. Uh, I think I'm anyone can about, nominate themselves, right? They have to just go through the application process. I think that's a great idea to, mm -hmm. because we have a huge student body. Um, the only requirement is they have to be a resident of Amherst, which which we have many students here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if we if you know any student who who's willing, I think we, we should always you know, especially if in in areas where we could make use of you know like public health or a voice of an end. You know, I think that's a great idea. Well, how do we open up the? Because I know we are only, I think five, five, mm -hmm. yeah, of us, and so. I mean, if we wanted, if we felt that it was important now, would we be able to expand the number of members on the board? Um, because I, I have, I, I mean, I know that, like you said, there's a lot of students who are majoring in public health, and we had the um, students who did the, the um, public health survey or you know, help with um, gathering information. So I know that the board has involved students in the past college students from UMass. Um, but I just, I just feel like we have spent a lot of time on um, particular topics. Um, and there might be, you know, other people who have other um, perspectives and other things that are important to public health that that we're not really addressing. And so I I just I feel that even if we have an emergency co chair, it would be better than just just having one person as the chair. I feel like I, I just I, I I just feel strongly about that. It's so Lauren, I like what you're saying. Is it possible to have some something like a backup co-chair, a backup chair, like you're saying, an emergency yes. chair? Is that yes. what you're is that what you're suggesting? Is that something that yes. could work potentially? I don't know. Just asking. So that would mean to have one person kind of designated as that. You know, I I asked yes. him. I was going to be away. I was out of I was out of the country for two or two weeks during this last month, and I just thought I wasn't going to be around to do the things that normally have to be done about two weeks before the meeting. So I just uh, asked him because he's been on the board a long time as I have. And, um, but if, if someone, you know, if there's a will to designate that person, um, that would be a reasonable idea. Would, would that then be an, um a vice chair versus a co-chair. There you go. That's co-chair right Im implies yeah. to me the yeah. same position. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like it would be more appropriate for it to be a vice chair who can step up if the chair is unable to for some reason. And yeah. 
although I do think that, you know, we we all still have input. Um, so right. it isn't limited to the vice chair. That was the word I was looking for, vice chair. Thanks. I, I, I couldn't, chair. couldn't quite get it. <laughs> yeah. So it, what do you think? Is that something that we can propose? Do we need to check that out in any way? Can we propose that and vote on it here? You all, a chair, vice chair idea? I'm just not sure about procedure. I think when when we spoke about this, when Dave Zomek was here, he, I thought I got the message that we could do either of those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I I think he he said I think I think I'm right about that. That's what I remember from. Uh, yes, BBC. I remember he said that. Yes, he did say that. It's up to the board. Okay. I, in terms of adding people, I don't know if that is up to the board. I think that might be at a different level. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's more complicated, but I can also ask about that. Um, but I'm glad that Dave, you know, you all heard, or at least Lauren and Maureen are saying that you heard Dave say that it's up to the board to decide about the chair structure. But I think the number of board members is probably a different story. But I, again, will look into that. Mm -hmm. and let you know. Are, are all the board positions are all filled? Uh, right now they are. Yeah, I think it's yeah. five and they're all filled. And now come June, it's going to be a different story because both mm -hmm. Tim and Maureen are, their terms are ending in June. Mm -hmm. So we'll have two vacancies. So mm. perhaps we want to focus, uh, you know, or plan ahead for that time or close to that time and, you know, broaden the scope, maybe advertise or, you know, let yeah. people in the School of Public Health, if that's who you think might be particularly interested and encourage them to apply because that, right. you know, Amherst has its application process, but yep, we do have time to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I agree that it makes sense to be intentional about that if that's a group that we want in, because I don't think they're going to know that it's open to them or, mm -hmm. you know, think that they are. And so I think, you know, intentional outreach would be required if, if we really want to get applicants from that pool. Mm -hmm. You mean from college students? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the other thing that I'll just offer on this, and I think maybe you want to move to a vote. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to offer one thing, which is that um, I've been talking. So Lauren, you and I didn't get a chance to talk before this meeting. I reached out no. to everyone and I, I got mm -hmm. to talk to three of you, but not all of you. Um, but one idea that I had sort of had before talking to people, but talked to a couple of folks about was sometimes the Board of Health purview is 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 rather restricted you know it's about some of like the body art regulations tobacco regulations it's very in the weeds sometimes and some students might just love that and other students might not be so interested in that but i do like the idea of having sort of a program advisory board you know like a programmatic advisory board to the health department that would be separate from the board of health which is really focused on regulations but which would help us and our staff to think about how we're really engaged with the community how we're listening to community voice about what people need what their health needs are including students and other folks historically and currently marginalized groups, people whose voices are not often at the table. Could we do something like that, an advisory board that's kind of an adjunct to the Board of Health? And that might be a super important place for students to be. So it's just something that I'm thinking about. So you know, Lauren, um, and we can talk more if you and I get a chance to sit, sit down at some point, maybe in the coming weeks. But it's because uh, it, it does address exactly this point that you're bringing up about the importance of hearing from students. Mm -hmm. No, it seems like a good way to broaden the input in general and to yeah. the health department. And not that we shouldn't try to get students on the Board of Health, because some students might really like it. I'm just cognizant of the fact that it might not be the best fit for all students, and different students mm -hmm. have different ways they want to weigh in on what we're doing as a health department, I think. Right. So it's good, it's good feedback, good things to consider. Mm -hmm. So we are we ready to move to a vote about succession? So uh, I I think you know we should vote first on you know uh, having Maureen as the chair until June, uh, just for consensus, and then 
Um, if you want to change the structure, we could actually vote after June. You know, we can we can see if we can have a vice chair or something like that. Or are we proposing something like vice chair right now? I'm just. I am proposing that. Do we decide on the structure first or the, or the? I, I, I thought you sense. guys wanted a chair and vice chair. Uh, if we were to have a, another person or a backup person, it would be a vice chair. But I think, I guess the question is the order in which we just take a vote, I guess, to decide the vote on the structure of it, chair, vice chair. Oh, okay. The people after that. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my thought. Yeah, let's vote okay. on the structure first. And then we'll vote on the second one is to actually person who will fill those positions in. So, so can anyone make a motion for a chair and a vice chair? as a structure of leadership here? I can, um, I um, move to um, have the Board of Health um, consist of a chair and a vice chair. Do I have to say like? Anyone second? I second that. Any discussions? I think we discussed that, I think. <laughs> no, I think I, usually after the No, I know. I think second day to be I'm not I'm saying it. I don't have anything to right. add now. We're ready to vote. Um, mm -hmm. all right. Uh Pramila? Aye. Risha? Aye. Maureen? Maureen? Aye. Lauren? Aye. And, and myself, I, Tim Gandhi. So it's, the motion is passed. So we'll have a chair and a vice chair. So um, I, I would like to make a motion that Maureen will serve as a chair. Uh, Chair for the Board of Health until June. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Ramila? Aye. Risha? Aye. Lauren? Aye. And Tim Dandy Rai. Well, any such chair. So um, <laughs> you're the chair. Okay. So for um, the next for a co-chair, I would like to ask to see. Vice chair. 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 Sorry. Vice chair. Any volunteers for a vice chair? I'd like to nominate you if you're willing. I, I don't know. You know, I didn't ask you ahead of time, so. Yeah, I could serve, no problem. I need so, a motion. So I have to make a motion? Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to um, appoint Timothy Rounder as uh, vice chair of the Board of Health. I'll second that. All right. Uh, Any discussion? Any discussions? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Lauren? Aye. Lisha? Aye. Maureen? Aye. And Pramila? Aye. I cannot vote myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we did it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
And so, next so Maureen, is, uh, well, can I just ask, Maureen, that also means that you'll be chairing the public hearing in addition to the board meeting on November. Yes, 9th. and I'll need some help on how that gets structured because okay. it has other different rules. Yeah. Okay, we'll figure that out. Yes. Is that, that's a Zoom thing, right? That's yeah. still a thing, right? I'm just going to thinking because I'm not going to be for the next many Thursdays, not going to be in MS. That's right. Okay, next to our agenda is new business. Um, um, I have something I want to ask about, but I did not. I did not put it down as a uh, subject to be discussed. So is that okay? Is this where we do that? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Or mm -hmm. topics not anticipated by the chair? Yeah. Yeah, it was that, it, well, we're not in that section yet. That's where I yeah. thought I would, okay. Oh, well, okay. I can keep it, yep. I mean, in just a, uh, in general, any new business we have, I think maybe Kiko can, help us out in uh, before we get into the director's update. Mm. Should we discuss anything or? Um, I definitely have some updates, but I don't have any new business to introduce right now. Okay. I, I know that I think there was an issue um, one of the inspectors had, but then it didn't end up coming to fruition. But I know that often that's this is a place where Ed and Susan might have some new things to discuss with the board related to food inspections or something. So, but not not today. Excellent. I don't know why we have like a 45 minutes for new business. <laughs> no. When no agenda items under new business. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so we'll, we'll do the director's update. Uh, Kiko, if you want to do that. Yeah. So I'll, I mean, as, again, I've only been here for less than two weeks, but I'll tell you what I know so far, um, which is that um, and apologies if I'm telling you things that you already know in terms of what's happening with the COVID vaccine now that it's it's commercially available. And so, you know, CVS and Stop and Shop and all of those places are doing vaccine clinics. So we're not getting much vaccine from the state. We used to get a lot of it. So we only have 80 doses right now of COVID vaccine. However, we have this great partnership with through the Public Health Excellence Grant with the City of Northampton Department of Health and Human Services. And they are helping us to organize three COVID and flu clinics um, in the next six weeks. So we have, um, we have, wait, I have to look at my spreadsheet here because I don't have this committed to memory. We have um, on the 26th of October, we are scheduling a COVID and flu clinic at Clark House, just across the way from us here. Um, housing, I think everyone knows where that is, right? Housing complex for folks. So we're working with the building management to schedule that clinic specifically for residents and staff at Clark House. Um, and we anticipate that some people from Ann Whalen, the, the building right next door will also be coming. So um, we're doing that in collaboration with the PHE group from Northampton. So they're providing the vaccine and the staffing and all that. It's really helpful. Um, they're also helping us to organize a clinic on the 2nd of November and that's at Craig Stores at the emergency shelter at Emanuel Lutheran Church. That'll be in the evening from seven to 8.30. And so those two clinics are considered private clinics. We're not advertising them widely, um, but we, if someone were to show up, we wouldn't turn them away. Um, and we wanna prioritize the residents and staff in both in all of those, those two places at Craig Stores and also at Clark House. And then on the seventh from nine to 12, we're holding a, another clinic, COVID and flu at the senior center here in the Bangs Community Center. And that one we are putting in the senior newsletter. We're advertising more widely. Again, we want to make it available to people who use the senior center, but we will ha happily give the vaccine to anybody who comes and we're promoting it fairly widely. And we have some flyers that we're getting out and things like that. Um, there's People can register themselves online. The link is on the flyer. People can also call us and they can call, the easiest thing for people to do is to call the Public Health Excellence staff at City of Northampton Department of Health and Human S Services. And I'll just say that number so it's recorded for this webinar, which is 413-587-1314 would be the number to call to register for um, that clinic on the 7th, which happens to be election day. 
and and the senior center is a polling place oh. so it'll be interesting to see how crowded it gets and whether maybe it's a good thing it will help to drive additional traffic to the vaccine clinic if people are coming to vote they can also get a vaccine if they haven't had it yet so that's the covid vaccine clinic covid flu vaccine clinic update any questions about that is this information on the website the phone number or that I, call? Wow, good question. I don't know that it is on the website. I think it should be. Um, so yes, I'm, I'll make sure that it is on the website. I don't know how to update the website yet. That's not something that I've learned how to do. So I need to figure out who does that for us. And there are other um, clinics throughout the Valley through that same organization, isn't it? Yeah, um, yes. And in open fact, to the general public, they really are open to the general public. I, I think maybe what we can do is put that information also on the website because they hold them, you know, they're doing them in Hatfield and, and they're out in some of the hill towns as well, which is obviously not convenient for people in Amherst, but Northampton is having a number of clinics. So people from Amherst can certainly go to those. So we'll make sure to get that information updated on the website so the general public knows about these clinics that are happening. And do you um, think about people who don't have insurance or uh, yeah, I, all insurance is kind of required to cover this, but are there provisions at like the Walgreens and the CVSs to take care of those folks? I know there are through the, through the clinics, but I just wondered about, about if I just had that thought, <laughs> I didn't know if they had any requirement to, to care to administer a vaccine for people with who didn't have insurance or not. Yeah, we're we're trying to because people with insurance can more readily get it in other places. We are trying to prioritize people who are uninsured or underinsured for these clinics. Um, if people do have insurance, we take that information because the PHE folks can bill insurance to recoup some of the costs, but they also really want to see people who don't have insurance. Right. And then the vaccine that we do have, we are absolutely prioritizing. In fact, it's mandated that we use that for uninsured or underinsured folks. And so we're using that for some homebound. Olivia is making some visits to people who are homebound and other just sort of as needed basis um, for those people who don't have insurance. Thank you. Yeah. Olivia is our public health nurse. I don't know if everyone's if ever met her, but she's the one doing all the vaccinations. So that's that. I have a couple other things. Should I go on, Tim? Uh, questions? One, one quick question. You know, I know uh, you have limited uh, like a space for people to sign up. And, and I'm just wondering if there is any uh, reserve funds for if there is a sudden increase in people who wanted to get a vaccine, but they don't have insurance and so do we have any funds in the in your department to actually satisfy that, you know, so that we could vaccinate them too? Well, so first of all, with the Northampton clinics, these three that I've talked about, they, they set the number of um, appointments at a number like 60. But if that fills up, they will expand it and they'll just okay. bring on more vaccinators. So we're, we're keeping track of how many people are enrolling. And I think they always come prepared for a number of walk-ins that might arrive. So yeah. they won't turn anyone away. And then... We do have vaccine, 80, 80 doses here that we can also use for uninsured and underinsured folks. And I think that we can order more of that as well if we run out. So I'm, I still don't know about our budget. That's not something I have learned yet, how much you know just income we have. I mean, what our funding is like to be able to buy things um, like additional doses of vaccine since we're not getting a lot of it. But I think the state is parceling it out in small amounts, but hopefully can give us more if we use all of what we have. So we're just kind of taking that one step at a time. Um, on the subject of COVID, I also wanted to mention that we get a lot of requests about COVID tests. We used to give those away. You know, we had them out on our table here in, this, in the bank center for folks to take. And there's also been a shift there where we're not getting as many of those um, for free, but the state um, is giving some tests. We just found out, we ordered some before we found this out. So we have now currently three boxes of COVID tests in our office, which again, we are giving out in sort of limited amounts, two tests per person who comes to ask. 
really kind of saying to folks, we're trying to prioritize people who really can't afford to buy these on their own. Um, so if that's you, here you go, but we're not gonna ask you for proof of income or anything. We just wanna make sure that people understand we're trying to keep these for folks who don't have other means to buy them. Um, and then we'll be ordering an additional 1800 test kits through the state that will be coming to us for free. So we're really pleased about that because at first we thought we we're gonna have such limited amount of tests. We'll have more than we thought, but we're still not gonna give them out you know, rampantly. We're gonna be careful about who we're giving them out to to prioritize those folks who need them the most. So that's what's happening with COVID tests. Mm -hmm. um, I also just wanted to mention that um, about West Nile virus, I think Tim, you wanted to make sure we covered that. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to give a brief summary or if you had a particular question. Yeah, if you can summarize, you know, how, how the town is responding. You know, so Yeah, so um, I think everybody knows that we are now, just since May, the town of Amherst Public Health Department is a member of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. I know Jen made that happen. I don't know. It sounds like it was a, quite a big effort. So it's really great to be part of them because they do all this tracking and monitoring for us and they put reports on their website and they communicate with us regularly. So in the middle of October, middle of last week, I think it was the 4th, we got a phone call from the state saying that they had one positive mosquito for West Nile virus from a pool in the northeast quadrant of the town. Um, and so that's on the, the you know, they, they maintain these risk maps, the state does, you can link, we have a link to them from our website. Um, and the risk is still very low. So even though one mosquito with West Nile was found, it's not, you know, it's not cause for concern. Um, we don't anticipate an increased likelihood of infection or anything like that or transmission, but it's just nice to let people know, hey, there was a mosquito that tested positive. So the testing program actually ends today. So no more testing because the weather is changing and with temperatures being below 50 in the evenings, um, the risk of, you know, biting mosquitoes being out there from um, dust to dawn, which is their prime time to be out and about, is is less. And then once there's a hard frost, frost, then we don't have to worry about mosquitoes. But the message just was, it's it was a bad mosquito here, and it took a little while to wind down. And um, I sometimes you still get cases late in the year of West Nile. So when we got this positive mosquito, we wanted to just let people know if there's mosquitoes about, be careful. Still wear long pants and long sleeves and repellent and all that sort of stuff until it really gets cold. So that's, we did put an alert on the website, which I think I shared with all of you. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to a reporter from the reminder, Bill Zito, cause he wanted to know what the deal was. So I spoke with him and he might just run a general story about mosquito borne illness and how it's important to be vigilant until it really gets cold. So that's, that's what I know about that. Again, I'm new, so I might've missed something, but <laughs> that's what Sounds I pretty good. Okay. Um, I guess the other two quick things, um, I think you also know that we get these wastewater, COVID wastewater reports, um, and we post those on the bulletin board out here. It's a way of monitoring, you know, the infection rate in, in the community. And there was a spike back in September, but it's coming down again now. I imagine it'll probably spike again in the winter months, but um, that is still something that we get and that we're tracking. And I think we put that, a link to that on our website as well in the COVID, on the COVID page. Uh, and then the final thing I just got today is because of our affiliation with the Public Health Excellence Grant, they send us every six months an infectious disease report um, that they collate and put together for us. So they give us our numbers of various infectious diseases and compared to the region. So I, I did just get that today and I wasn't sure um, if you all wanted me to send it to you or what. If, if you've got if you've seen those before, because I think they have produced these before and if they've been shared with the board. So I just wanted to let you know that that's a resource. I would like available. to see it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could try to share a screen if if that's um if that's interesting to you, or maybe you don't oh, want me to do right that. Right now. Yeah, no, but you couldn't good. see it anyway, Lauren, because you're trying. Oh, I can't people. see. Yeah, I can't. See. <laughs> I mean, I would like to see it in an email. I thought you. <laughs> I thought you said you were gonna like email it. I will. I totally will yeah. email it to you. Okay. I'll email it to everyone. Okay. I mean, there's. And there's nothing, it's not like Amherst has higher rates of anything that we should be concerned about. It's all just, you know, some tick-borne illness and cases of COVID. And it's nice to see it all in a report. So I'll send it to all of you. And if there's something that you want to discuss further, we could put it on the agenda for next time. So that's my update. 
Any questions from the board? I don't have a, I kind of have a question um, and kind of a comment. Um, I wanted to know kind of how the um, department like scales the needs of, you know, the town, you know, the populations in the town or people in the town, like what the needs are because um, I still don't have a grasp on that. And I came across like the ACE, the Adverse Childhood Experience, um, like the 10 question quiz. And do we have like any kind of quiz or survey or questions that kind of help us understand like what what are the needs, the public health needs of the people in the town? Because I'm not sure if I, I really have a grasp on what the, the health department uses to like get that information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. should i take a stab at that answering that tim yeah. yeah okay so um what i know lauren so far is that and we've mentioned it i think you even brought it up there was this needs assessment that was done um mm -hmm. that umass amherst students put together and i know that was presented to all of you in a board meeting a couple months back so and that's not comprehensive you know it's just a, a, a snapshot of some things you know i i think it's a and i've looked at it briefly but i haven't sort of looked, dived into it in a lot of detail so i think that for me being new it's a starting point to look at that i also think that part of my job as the new director is really to understand better what the needs are and i I'm thinking about how to do that. We don't have, you know, there isn't a comprehensive way that we do that regularly. It's not like we send out a survey to everybody every three months or something like that to find out what's going on. So, I mean, I definitely would welcome, Lauren, it sounds like you have some thoughts of how we can, and I as the new director can really think about how to find out what the needs are in this community and how we can develop mm -hmm plans and programs to address those needs. So I'm open to ideas that you and anybody else has about how we do that, how I do that, especially as a new person here. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. So do we have that report on the website or this is the community needs assessment reports they had been developed. I don't know if they are available on our yeah. website. Don't, I don't know if that's been posted to the website. Maureen, do you know? Does anybody know? I don't. I don't know. I know we all received a copy, but I don't know where else it might be. Um, whether there was just a summary. Uh, I can't remember. I'd have to okay. go back. Yeah, I mean, a, an executive summary would be nice because most people aren't going to want to slog through the whole document. So maybe that's something we can... And I, I think Nancy, I think the students worked on a summary, but then I think she was going to try to edit that or um, look, take a look at that. But I don't know exactly where that is. Where okay. That... I will. I believe they I know. presented it. I, that was one of the suggestions to develop a some executive summary so that it synthesizes the whole big picture of the of the document you know so yeah I mean, even if you can have that executive summary in on the on the website but have a link at the bottom the full report in case someone wants to go and look at it much more deeply yeah that's so any other questions on the board. If not, we can move to our next item, which is topics not anticipated. Uh, Ramila, do you want to? Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is really, it's a question and it's a question more for Kiko uh, than anything. Although I do think some at some point it might be worth the board's while to see to look at how these services are integrated. I noticed in the Gazette that there was um, uh, announcement that the Senior Center will hold its second annual health fair on Tuesday, October 17th. Um, and it says residents, it's, a, it's organized by the Senior Center and residents can talk to local providers and learn about ways 
to take steps towards a better lifestyle. And there's a, they make a they list how um, who's going to be represented at the fair. But I was very curious that the Musanti Health Center is not on the list, and it almost seems to me like that would be uh, maybe there's a reason there could well be, but. Um, I'm pretty sure they didn't know anything about it. And I, I just feel like it's a resource that we should use more. Um, so it's so interesting that you're asking that because I um, was in touch with um, Debbie DeStefano, who is with the Hilltown Community Health Center that is yeah. like the umbrella over the Masanti Health Center. She came by my office just the other day, reached out to me. I'm going to meet with them, you know, as part of my getting to know people in the community. Yeah. And she right. said, oh, I'll be there for the health fair on Tuesday. And I thought, what health fair? So I didn't know about it. So thank you for enlightening <laughs> me that it's actually here at the senior center. Um, but she said she would be there. So oh, that's interesting because, about it. because the health center is not listed as, as, a, as so a that's person. glad. I'm, that's perfect. I'm very glad yeah. that they'll be represented. I yeah. just thought it was odd if they would, weren't represented. So. I agree. Yeah. And so, I mean, it sounds like she's going to be there. I imagine other staff from the health center would be there as well. But you know what? I'll ask her just to make sure that that, that you know, just to make sure I understand who's going to be there from the health center. So that's yeah, great, great to be aware of. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Any other topics? Excellent. So I think we are almost end of the uh, agenda. So can I have a motion for, adjour for adjourning the meeting? Make the motion. Oh. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Um, I'll take a vote. Uh, Pramila? Aye. Maureen? Aye. Lauren? Aye. Risha? Aye. And Tim, aye. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.